Hi, let me try to briefly explain the changes I made to the BlueArp firmware 253, a successor to the previous firmware 238, which came around two years ago. There is quite a lot of changes and improvements here. In brief, it's a new drum sequencer mode, so BlueArp can now sequence drums from the unit as well. Uh, chain variations and several GUI improvements uh, I made when I created quite a complicated performance on the unit itself. I realized that some things are not as convenient as I wanted them to be, so I decided to change a few things and we'll check that. First of all, there is this new basics page. You see it uh, right after the unit powers up. And also there is new uh, logo screen along with the firmware version you see when you power up the unit. And you see it's immediately recognized as a USB MIDI device in my system uh, when it powers up. So here there are some essential settings like ports and channels uh, you need to configure first when you start using the unit and ARP state on, off, through and other special options. And the main thing here that's not present elsewhere on the pages is uh, operation mode, which can be either RPG or drum sequence. So we'll touch it a bit later. Now let's go through the other pages. We have page two input filter, which was previously page one and the numbers shifted because we have this basics page in the beginning. The elements here are rearranged and they look a bit different like value boxes instead of just lines as it was before and they're arranged exactly like on the plugin input filter block and then arpeggiator block on this page arp and output filter mm, block on this page output filter next thing we have two alternative ways to adjust the values on almost all the pages so the default way as it can be done is that you navigate with the arrow buttons and once you're on some gui element you just change it with the encoder it worked and it works the default way of changing things Next thing is you can navigate with uh, the step buttons on many pages, almost all the pages, for example. Um, number nine is input quantize in my case. And if I hold this step button and use arrows up and down, I'm changing this value. So it's just another way. I can do it with the encoder or I can do it this way. And even I can navigate with the arrows and then and then hold this thing and change the value. Um, another uh, another alternative way is to uh, click OK two times. Basically, first click brings up the menu, the pop-up menu, and first option is almost anywhere is the value list, which allows me to select the value from the list either with the buttons or with the encoder and when I click OK I select it. So double clicking on any option brings up the value list. On steps page as well. So here as before I'm moving with the arrows I'm adjusting values with the Encoder. Alternative option like holding the step and uh, pressing up and down buttons, it works here as well. And I can select steps this way, works pretty well as well. And using step buttons to set the value. Um, then, then I can um, Double click OK, select the value from the list. It works here as well. For example, plus one octave for certain steps. 
and I'm not sure it was here before but there is an option to set all the steps to a certain value so OK uh, brings up the menu all steps to selecting this for example plus one so my all all steps are plus one for the octave or for example back to the default value then uh, on on the steps page there is a new option uh, like XOX edit which is toggled by the shift button it's yet experimental I'm not sure I will keep it this way uh, but you can try it so um, there is the value I will toggle for example key one or plus one sorry in this case and the steps I'm pressing they become octave plus one and I can toggle it this way back and forth or for plus two for example yeah cancel exits that grid editing mode then on the chains page there is now this chain variation and when I select the variation my bottom screen becomes a list of conditions for this particular chain variation for example I can set up here uh, highest velocity greater or equal certain value like 100 so it will be memorized for this chain variation one and when I go back to the default variation again I see uh, these options uh, global settings for the chain like number of chains this kind of stuff all the other screens I believe they're just the same as before I didn't change anything here except this new menu system which has value list as the first option almost anywhere for example pitch band I can see the options then let's uh, let's check um, the drum sequencer mode this way and uh, when you switch the modes it uh, gives a warning that all the programs will be erased because uh, for the drum sequencer mode it's a bit different program structure but as we click OK now I have the piano sound so let me switch my motif to the um, drum sound I have it somewhere so yeah this is stereo, stereo GM drum kit now we're playing the default drum program and now let's try to kind of make a simple drum pattern so let's add snares To steps 5 and 13 um, for example grid editing mode will work for the drums as well and here it will work much better I believe for example I can toggle kicks for certain steps the way I want so back to the normal pattern now let's uh, cancel exits the grid editing mode let's add hi-hats for all the steps so set all steps to n1 and now let's go into grid edit and switch uh, hi-hats off for certain steps and for example for step 15 I want node 2 which is open hi-hat but now I want to decrease the velocity so um, OK, pop-up menu, velocity edit, now I'm in drum velocity edit mode, decreasing the velocity for this step. And I can set the same way all the steps to a certain uh, velocity. Now this pop-up menu, it's related to the velocity because we're in drum velocity edit mode. Cancel will exit that mode back into the note edit mode. And the shortcut is to long press shift. Brings me to the drum velocity edit and cancel back to note edit. Then we have um, page 4 becomes drum lane editing page. 
again here we have our steps uh, shift will um, bring us to the velocity edit just the same on the, as on the previous page the main thing here is that we can uh, change our drum notes configure them here just like in the plugin it's a drum lane block on the left panel we have it here uh, and for our drum rhythm let's do the same trick I showed already with the plugin for the percussion let's set all the steps to random so it's tr triggering the random sound for the percussion let's uh, solo this lane and now as I decrease probability a little bit to some somewhere around 25 percent I have just quarter of the notes triggering Let's add some random velocity here and unsolo our percussion line. And also I can add to the hi-hats some um, random, add some random velocity to the hi-hats. So yeah, here we have our basic drum rhythm made just with the hardware interface in just a couple of minutes. Uh, then we have uh, current chain. This page is the same for the ARP and drum mode. Again, chains, variations, conditions for the variation. And all the other pages are the same for either ARP or drum mode. And um, another thing I'd like to show, let's go to ARP mode back and there is a new latch option called uh, latch and latch plus sustain. What was just uh, a checkbox, just latch on or off, it, it, it has three options now. And to show it, let me uh, switch my motif back to the piano sound default piano sound so i have this full concert grand uh, let me go back to the rpg to mode now i have this default rolling note sound let's program some really simple um pattern like i want to eighth notes i want to just uh sixteen not sixteen but eight steps here just eight steps so let's make it like key one two three one two three one two very simple up pattern and step one will be uh, minus one octave very simple pattern let me check again what i have here sync Input quantize, uh, let it be one eighth as well. And so, if I press, uh, if I switch on latch, it will just, it will just hold the chord. But once I go to latch plus sustain, you see notes became long they became sustained, the output notes, I mean. Back to just ledge. So, as I showed in one of the previous videos, it works great with the guitar sounds, like guitar pickup arpeggios. Last but not least, let's check the editor application uh, for the Blue Arp. Uh, let me run it, and as I run it, it tries to automatically detect the ports, and you see here that USB uh, link is on. Here we have MIDI ports for the Blue Arp DM already selected. And here you see uh, this icon is white now. Let me close the app again. It shows that USB link is off. Uh, this thing is grayed out, but as soon as I run the editor application, it becomes white and says that USB link is on, but I need to manually synchronize the unit with the app. 
it doesn't do it automatically because it doesn't know who is the master here it's the app is it the app or the unit so i have to if the unit is uh, the master here so receive get all data will basically fetch all the data from the unit then i'll synchronized uh, we see this um pattern we just created and um since I'm changing anything on the app, it's immediately reflected here. And the other way around, changing it on the unit, it's reflected here. So sometimes you might get um, checksum error if your USB connection isn't stable because I implemented some con checksum and some consistency controls over the USB connection, like it counts each uh, C6 command it sends back and forth to detect if any commands are lost or any USB packets are lost. And then you'll have this checksum error. And if that happens, you can again uh, manually do receive get all data and it will reset that error flag and it will continue working normally so i think now it it should be more stable and predictable because i also fixed some like um some errors regarding the usb sync and i got some complaints from one active user that there were some problems with them when you use it for a long time, sometimes it loses connection or freezes the control application. So I believe now it shouldn't happen or at least should become less frequent. Uh, so yeah, I think that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. Maybe it's uh, this firmware is not polished as I wanted it to be. Um, I'll um, fix some things in the future, but they will be just minor updates. I believe I did all the major updates to the blur up I wanted to do. Uh, the drum sequencer mode was the biggest thing I wanted to do for a couple of years, but I didn't have time, and especially with all the events that happened, uh, I wasn't feeling as motivated. But yeah, I'm glad I finally did this. So thanks for watching. Stay tuned and have fun with Blorp. See you.